The Supreme Court has now said that it will decide whether to prohibit the use of race conscious admissions in higher education. According to The Wall Street Journal, it's agreeing to consider challenges to policies at both Harvard and the University of North Carolina. The court, in a brief written order on Monday, said it would consider a pair of challenges by a group called Students for Fair Admissions. It's been led by the conservative legal activist Edward Blum. They sued both schools on the same day in 2014. The lawsuit against Harvard alleged that the school uses quota-like racial balancing tactics that artificially raise the standards of admission for Asian American applicants in violation of federal civil rights law. The challengers alleged Asians were admitted at a lower rate than whites, even though their overall academic scores were better. Harvard rejected the claims of discrimination, said it only considered race in a flexible way as one factor among many in building diverse classes of students. Well, why is it even being considered as a factor at all? Couldn't you just look at, for example, life challenges without looking at race? Why is race considered a life challenge in the United States explicitly? And why is it even a a matter of inquiry for schools to determine that your race is a relevant factor in whether you ought to be admitted to a school? I mean, it is a pretty overt racism when students get in with 200 points less on the SATs than this Asian student over here, just because this Asian student happens to be Asian. This is what they used to do to Jews at colleges in the United States. Now they're doing it to Asians in the United States. It's absurd on its face. It is wild racism from the left. And yet the left continues to double down on this because obviously Asians are a supposed model minority, according to the left, whereas black Americans are indubitably put upon. And therefore, black Americans only need a 1300 or a 1200 to get into Harvard, whereas Asians needed 19,000 to get on. uh, They need to get a 19,000 on their SATs in order to get into Harvard. Under the Trump administration, the Justice Department actually supported that lawsuit. The Biden era department abandoned that position and offered support for Harvard in a legal brief last month, urging the Supreme Court to turn away the challenge. The lawsuit against the University of North Carolina was similar to the Harvard allegations, though it added claims that the flagship public university in Chapel Hill violated the Constitution's guarantee of equal protection. So with a private school, the challenge is going to be that it violates the Civil Rights Act. With a public school, the, the challenge is going to be that it violates the 14th Amendment. The challengers allege that the school unlawfully factored students' race into the admissions process, favoring black, Hispanic, and Native American applicants, and even caused them harm by inviting them into classrooms for which they weren't prepared, which is true. The, the, the Thernstroms, who used to write for The Atlantic, they documented very well the, the phenomenon of misalignment in which students are admitted to schools that they actually are not prepared for, and then they tend to flunk out of those schools at a higher rate. UNC in court papers says it has made progress on diversity, but continues to face challenges in admitting underrepresented minorities. Now, the truth is that Supreme Court precedent here has been ridiculous because Supreme Court said that for some reason, diversity is in and of itself a public good. I'm not sure why. They never really explained why diversity is a public good. If they said that a wide range of human experiences is worthwhile to pursue in student body settings, that might be better. But when they say racial diversity itself is some sort of public good, there's no reason why that should be. Also, the diversity standards tend to be wildly inaccurate. So, for example, if you have a classroom full of black students, this is considered diverse. If you have an entire classroom filled with Asian students, it's considered not diverse enough. Nobody can explain why. Both are monochrome, but only one type of monochrome is diverse, according to the left. Here is Jen Psaki, however, trying to defend the Biden administration pushing overt racism against Asian Americans. We strongly believe this administration in the benefits of diversity in higher education, and we take very seriously our commitment to advancing equity and equal opportunity for historically underserved populations. Okay, but they're going to have to explain why this is capable of violating constitutional precepts. Now, the fact the Supreme Court is even considering it again is really interesting because in 2016, the court ruled that the University of Texas at Austin's process passed constitutional muster despite the fact that it took race into account. That was an absurd ruling. It was a 4-3 court, and Justice Anthony Kennedy was the deciding justice in that particular case. He joined the left, of course, Ginsburg, Breyer, and Sotomayor, saying universities are defined by intangible qualities which make for greatness. He said considerable deference is owed to a university in defining those intangible characteristics. Well, they seem pretty tangible when you're barring Asians. Just to be fair, it seems like kind of tangible to the Asian student who scored a 1580 on his SAT, then got barred because he happened to be Asian. But this is something that the left loves to push. This is one of their favorite things. By the way, they don't just want it to apply at colleges because nothing that starts in college ends in college for the left. The Washington Post editorial board has an entire piece today about how every company in America should be forced to, quote unquote, diversify its boardroom. Quote, the Securities and Exchange Commission last summer approved a proposal by NASDAQ to require that most boards of directors among the exchange's approximately 3,000 companies include at least one woman, as well as at least one person of color and or 
one LGBTQ person. NASDAQ's initiatives was groundbreaking for U.S. Securities Exchange. It's not very novel in other contexts. California already had laws mandating that public companies headquartered in state have women, and by 2023, members of underrepresented communities on their boards. Many European countries require more gender diversity than the NASDAQ even envisions. But this is good, according to the Washington Post. It's very encouraging because more progress is needed. Luckily, there are plenty of incentives for firms to make such strides and not just political and public pressure. Okay, so here's the deal. These companies, all they do is they find some sort of placeholder and they just add seats to the board and then they put that placeholder on the board to ensure that they are not sued by the government. But the reality, of course, is that businesses are going to continue to run. It's an absurdity on its face and it's very, very silly. But again, it is, it is unearned moral superiority of the left that is the deciding factor here, even when that means active discrimination against more qualified applicants in college or against members of the board who ought to be there as opposed to being leveraged onto the board by the government. The government has no business in this area. And by the way, neither does NASDAQ or the, S- or, or the, or the New York Stock Exchange. It's ridiculous. The solution the companies are going to find is to have a useless board member that they add and pay a little bit of a salary or never go public in the first place. That will be the actual answer to, to this problem. Who's got two thumbs and wants you to like and subscribe?